Hi everyone and welcome to um, our session today on Get Crafty which is a programme that Newington Green Meeting House Revolutionary Ideas which is the project that I manage um, is uh, working on with Hackney Museum and we've got Josie from Hackney Museum here today um, so we're going to be talking a bit about um, our uh, work that we do at Hackney Museum that I work on at the project and then about this new programme that secondary schools can get involved in not just secondary schools actually secondary school age children too um, and um, the prizes how it works how do you apply how do you get involved um, and some of the support that we can offer you for this project it's been a bit of a weird year for um, teachers and for schools this year um, but we're hoping that this might be of interest you know it, it meets the needs of the national curriculum but also the recovery cu curriculum too so you know after quite a traumatic and weird time um, for a lot of your learners we're hoping this might be might be a nice resource to use in the classroom too and there's a nice prize and, and it's a chance for for local children to connect with things outside of the school in a time where things like that are a bit difficult so this is what we're going to go through um, and then there'll be some um, um, advice from one of the guest judges as well and I'll show you um, where you can access the free resources and um, it's completely self-led the program so if you want to to just go along with it yourself you can but you're more than welcome to contact me and I'll share my details if you need any further support or advice that way um, so, as I said, I'm Amy and I work at Newington Green Meeting House and um, that's the building in the picture. So if you're Hackney and Islington based, you might know the building and you might have seen the recent building works there too. Um, so the project that I work on is a National Lottery Heritage Fund project. Um, and so we got this um, grant money from funders to be able to restore the building, make it accessible, make it future proof, but also create a whole programme of engagement. So that's working with schools, working with the local community. And that's the bit that I do. Um, and so we've got quite a few schools programmes running at the minute, but this is the one that we're offering for secondary schools and, and older children. Um, and every year we're going to be doing another um, annual competition. Um, and just a bit about us, the history of the Meeting House is, is all about kind of radical thoughts, people doing things differently, people challenging things. So we've got a very kind of broad remit and one that's, you know, very linked in with, you know, today expressing yourself. How do you feel about what's going on in the world? Um, you know, we've been there since 1708. So we have an over a 300 year history in the local area. And the building is um, London's oldest non-conformist place of worship. Um, and these are just some of the some of our parts of history and again you'll see some of these things are really um, uh, in a kind of what's going on in the news today and things that you're probably addressing with your learners anyway so things like abolition um, black rights women's rights issues like equality issues like oppression and things like this religious tolerance these are all things that run through our history um, and this is the the project in a nutshell we have a website there so if you want to know just more about the project generally or what's going on in the building that's at ngmh.org.uk and then we've got a specific learning page with information about our education programs so the one we're talking about today is the get crafty one that you can see there but there's all sorts of other things that we offer too for primary schools and secondary schools uh josie do you want to talk a little bit about hacking museum and what you offer there Yes, love to. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I work at Hackney Museum, which is in Hackney Central next to the Town Hall. Um, we're a local social history museum um, all about the people that live in Hackney and that have lived in Hackney. So we're a bit of a migration museum, really, because we're all about where people have moved from and how migration is, has made Hackney what it is. Um, we work with thousands of primary school children in Hackney every year and doing lots of different work, at, yeah, on, mostly on the theme of migration and people's stories. Um, and we've done some work with secondary schools, um, but uh, a lot less than, than we do with primary schools. So really excited to be involved with this project with the unity and, yeah, um, hopefully link up with some secondary schools to do lots of different things. Um, yeah. Yeah, definitely. 
So the project that we've we've come uh, worked on with with Josie and Hackney Museum is based around Mary Wollstonecraft, and that's because she's a, a big figure in Hackney. You know, she's of kind of global importance. And the building, Newton Green Meeting House, is the only surviving building that Mary Wollstonecraft um, has a direct link to. You know, she moved around quite a lot in the UK, and none of those buildings really exist in the same sense. So that's a bit of our claim to fame at Newington Green. She's our kind of heroine, and it links in with the kind of Hackney and Islington heritage too. So um, just a few words on Mary Wollstonecraft for those that might not be that familiar with her. Um, the reason why she's such a famous figure is because she's kind of seen as the British mother of feminism. So this is a lady who lived, you know, 250 years ago and she moved to Newington Green and she opened a school there when she was quite young. She was about 24. And what kind of makes Mary so important is her thoughts about girls education it's about equality about women having the same rights as men and you know nowadays that conversation comes up a lot but at the time you know when Mary was around 250 years ago that was quite a radical thing to say um and um, you know she's she's really part of that enlightenment period so if you're talking about that or if you've addressed that with learners you know this is the time where people are questioning things they're asking questions they're not just um, okay to be subservient to the Bible or the church or things, you know, this is the age of science and people asking difficult questions. And Mary was quite a difficult woman. Um, and she's asking these kind of questions. And, you know, you hear about the Enlightenment period and Mary gets missed out a lot because she's a woman, but actually she's a big figure of the Enlightenment at the time. Um, you know, she's also one of the first kind of women who's a an author as a job she gets paid money to write and and, and um, her work gets published which for the time is very pioneering too and she's involved in a lot of um, political things for equal rights she's um, an abolitionist she wants to get rid of slavery she agrees in equal rights for women she's a bit of a revolutionary she really wants to change the way that the government works and things like that so lots of things that Mary really cared about are still issues, unfortunately, that we're working through today. So she can be seen as a, a bit of an inspiration. And um, again, like I said, she used to come to Newington Green um, to the meeting house. She wasn't Unitarian, which is the religion that, that is practiced or was practiced at the meeting house because the meeting house today is a non-religious church. So it's a bit more of the humanist tradition, but its roots are in this very liberal Christian church, which is Unitarianism. And um, Mary was always Church of England, but she really liked the things that were being said in the church. She liked the, the people there and the ideas they had, because the people that attended the meeting house have always been people that have thought a bit differently. And that's because they weren't allowed to worship in their own style because the Church of England was dominant. So these were always people that were a bit, bit rebels and Mary quite liked that. Um, so she was really encouraged by these kind of people and the Newington Green community. She, she opened a school there and then she wrote her first ever book, which is Thoughts on the Education of Daughters, while she was in Newington Green. And this is really where Mary starts to become a bit more radicalised and, and talk about why it's really important for women to have education. So that's kind of what links us with Mary. And there's lots of reasons why Mary is very relevant to today and to students' lives today too. So, you know, things like the gender pay gap is something that's very relevant to when we think about Mary because she's really talking um, quite a lot about women's equal rights, women's right to work. Um, you know, she gets paid as, um, as a writer herself and things like that. Um, that's something I think Mary would be appalled at if she realised that that was something that was still going on in 2020. Um, we've got the Black Lives Matter movement, you know, really important um, movement that's happening at the moment. And that's very relevant to Mary too, because she was a uh, big, she wrote a lot about abolition of slavery and she wanted kind of universal suffrage, suffrage for oppressed people um, of all different types. Um, so that would have been something I think Mary would be particularly keen on and championing today. And then girls' education generally, you know, we we have to remember that there's lots of places in the world still today where women and girls don't have the same access to education that men do. And that's uh, an issue that, you know, Mary was very aware of 250 years ago. And there's lots of work by charities like Rosa UK and things like that that do a lot of a lot of that work today so it's still unfortunately very relevant um, and it's linked with the curriculum this this kind of project we kind of hope that by 
entering this competition and doing this work and learning a bit about Mary and then students being inspired to create a piece of art meets the curriculum links here. And these are curriculum links for the art curriculum for um, Key Stage three and four um, but also for PSHE and citizenship obviously it can be really easily linked with um, you know the roles of parliament and monarchy and political systems um, but it also can be used you know in English it's a really good cross-curricular project and I've just added a note in here about the recovery curriculum because I'm very aware with everything that's going on at the minute that DfE are really pushing this idea of a recovery curriculum being something that's very cross-curricular because obviously students have missed out on a lot of learning and now teachers are having to do an awful lot of learning now and then catch up on things. So I'm hoping that this resource might be a good way to do that because it covers so many of these different things, art, history, English, PSHE, but also gives children a chance to, you know, express they can link it to very much what's going on or their recent experience and things like that. So I'm hoping that it might actually fill a need for kind of teachers and learners at the moment too. And if you have any questions about anything like that, or you want some advice or support, then, you know, you can get in touch. Um, so the, the project itself. So the project itself is that in a nutshell, we're asking students to create a piece of artwork inspired by Mary and her time in Hackney, really. Um, and so uh, the art can be any type of art, really, um, that you can see a bit more information um, just on this post it here. It says, you know, that we can, we're accepting various forms of art, might be a drawing or a painting or sculpture. We're really open to different types. Um, what we really need um, is something that we can exhibit in the meeting house. The idea is that um, the entries that get shortlisted will be on display in the meeting house. So the only thing we need to think about is practicality, about how we can display it. So we're kind of asking for entries that aren't bigger than a metre square, really. If it's recorded or something like that, that's not a problem. We can play that on a screen, but we just need to be a kind of aware of the practicalities. I mean, if you have any questions about that, you can get in touch. I'd absolutely love sculptures of Mary that are six foot by six foot, but unfortunately, I think we're going to struggle to fit that in. So we just need to be kind of mindful of that. So no more than a metre square. That's kind of what we're asking for. A different form of art. Absolutely wonderful. The time scale is that we're asking for you to submit your artwork by December. But Josie and I were speaking earlier and we might think of extending that because of the current circumstance to, to March next year. So currently we're asking um, them for to December. Um, but if you're thinking, oh, I'd love to do that, but it might be something that happens next year. That's not a problem at all. And if you sign up to the uh, teacher's newsletter, which we can put a link on um, this video, um, we'll we can let you know when we'll update you. The teacher's newsletter goes out once a month um, and it gives you an update on everything that's going on with the project and the education programmes. So you'll be able to get any updates that way. So it might mean that you've got a bit more time. Um, and then um, we're asking also for artwork to, to um, be submitted with a short supporting statement. Now that supporting statement can be recorded too. So if you've got learners that you think would be, it'd be better for them to kind of explain in their own words, you could do that. Doesn't have to have their, their picture. You could, you know, just do an audio or something like that with, um, you know, a couple of minutes explaining what the context behind their artwork is, what they were inspired by, how they came to create that piece of art. That would be amazing. Just because we're gonna be displaying that. And so for people that hopefully come and see their work in the meeting house on display in, their, in the exhibition that we'll hold, they'll get a bit more information about, about their work. Um, like I said, um, you can contact me for any information. And then what we've done is we've created a resource that you can work with students um to go through and um, which is here but I will um add that link in a moment um and so the idea is that what we've done is we've created basically a unit of work that's via powerpoint so you can go through and we've got a teacher's resource so you don't need to know everything about Mary you don't need to know everything about the competition learners can be pretty self-led um and that way hopefully it makes it as easy as possible for you to to join in um, there, there will be um, judged the artworks by a panel of guest judges that we've been really lucky to have involved in the project, um, which will be great. 
So the um, judges that are going to be um, judging for the the um, entries um, for the winner will be Andy, who's the Minister of New Unity. So New Unity is the non-religious church that use um, the, and own the Newington Green Meeting House. So Andy will be involved. Um, Anna Birch, who is the Director of Fragment and Monuments Theatre and Film Company. And Anna's based in Newington Green and knows an awful lot about Mary Wollstonecraft and has done some amazing pieces of artwork and film work herself about Mary. Then we've got B. Roller, who's chair of the Mary on the Green campaign. And if you're local, you might know that there's a statue of Mary Wollstonecraft being installed on the on Newington Green shortly. That's been a 10 year campaign by the Mary on the Green campaign. So we're really um, happy that B is going to be involved. The mayor of Hackney, Philip Glanville himself, is going to be involved in the project, which we're really excited about. And Petra, Petra Roberts, who is the cultural development manager for Hackney Council. Then we've got Louisa Albani, who's an artist and independent publisher. And we're going to have some words from Louisa um, later on um, just to um, encourage your learners and give them some advice. Um, Louisa has an exhibition about Mary Wollstonecraft that's going to be installed in the meeting house in the near future, too. So um, she's already a step ahead of your learners in that she's kind of done this work before. We've got Annie Nicholson, who is also known as the Fandango Kid, who does lots of artwork, especially around London. Um, she's quite um, prestigious in her own right. So there would be a chance to have a professional artist like Louisa talking um, and offering advice to learners. And then Hillel Undem, who um, runs uh, Crisp Studio, who's a local ceramics producer or craft designer. You know, if we could get some, we're looking at all different types of art forms for this. So ceramics, again, would be wonderful. So it's really nice to have someone who's coming at um, art from a different, different kind of um, craft sense, which is wonderful. So we're very aware that there's a bit of context here that learners need to kind of understand for them to take part in the project. So to try and make that as easy as possible for you and for learners, we've got a pack of resources here. Um, so the link here links to an anthology about Mary and specifically about her time at Newington Green. So that's a really good thing that learners can have a quick read through might inspire them to find a particular thing they're really interested about about Mary's time in Hackney. Um, we've got a virtual tour about Mary's Newington Green so they can take this virtual tour that was put together by the Fragments and Monuments Theatre Company that's run by Anna Birch um, and they can go on a virtual tour around Newington Green and learn about Mary's time there and what she would have experienced. And that's great because they can do that in the classroom in the current circumstances. If worse comes to worse and you know schools close and, and everyone's back at home again that can totally be something that, that kids do at home. We've got a short theatrical performance using Mary's words. Again, it's quite a nice creative and engaging way that um, learners can learn a bit more about Mary if they're, a, if they're the kind of learners that might be interested in watching something as opposed to reading something. You can ask me. I'm more than happy to have a Zoom question and answer session with learners. Um, I'm a bit, I'm fairly au fait with Mary Wollstonecraft at this point after working on this project for a year, so I can do my best. Um, Unity Arts are a local arts organisation. They've done, um, they currently have an exhibition about Mary at the Meeting House and um, that you can see virtually on the website. That's another resource or you can come into the Meeting House if you'd like to. Um, and they have created a documentary about Newington Green and radical history and Mary's time there and things like that. There's a podcast that the BBC do here that's a really good introduction. Um, We've created a supporting resource, so if you click this link, it takes you through to our website, and then you'll get linked to the supporting resource. This is a supporting resource that we've put together, which you can basically go through um, slide by slide with the learners, and um, you've got my audio recorded here. I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but you can hear my voice play here and I go through the slides. And a bit like how I use this slide to tell you about how it links to today, you can just press play and my voice will explain to the learners that way. So hopefully that makes things a little bit easier for you. It explains the project, it explains um, a bit about Mary. They can then do some independent learning and research using those resources provided so they can learn a bit more. And then we've got some inspiration from Louisa Albani. And this is her artwork that she does, inspired by Mary. So that way they can kind of get a bit of inspiration from a professional artist like Louisa. 
and from Annie um, as to the kind of work that they do and how they get inspired. Oh, and Anna too. Um, and some words from Louisa. So that's the resource there. So the idea is they can use that resource. They've got, the, they've got um, those resources that we've pulled together and then hopefully they'll be inspired to create um, a piece of artwork themselves, depending on what, what they kind of like. So the resources are available here. Um, like I said, you can contact me, but we're also some of the artists that are involved in the judging panel um, are quite keen to provide support um, that way too. So if you thought I've got a group of learners and they're really getting into this, I wonder if maybe some of the artists could kind of some, offer some advice at the stage where they're kind of working on their artwork. Um, if you contact me and I, I can contact Annie or Louisa or Anna, I'm sure they would absolutely love to offer some advice that way. And then it might help with the kind of creative process, getting some advice from professional artists during the development. And we also have some funding available for art supplies. We're extremely lucky because of our funders um, at the National Lottery Heritage Project that we want accessibility is a really key thing. So if you're thinking, oh, that's great, but our art department, you know, we don't have the resource to be able to do that. Or I've got a child and they'd love to do a sculpture, but we just don't have the money to be able to provide that. Please do get in touch and we will see what we can do to help. Um, there's just some, these are just some words from Louisa Albani, the art, um, one of the artists involved, um, about some ins inspiration for learners about this. But I think that, you know, um, what Louisa's point that she makes here at the end is about experimenting, trying things, seeing how things go, you know, for the sake of expressing yourself. And I think, you know, when it comes to like the recovery curriculum, and like I was saying a minute ago and stuff, I think, you know, expressing yourself, being creative, you know, bouncing off other people and having other ideas is something that we, we all have kind of missed out on recently and stuff like that. So hopefully um, this might be something that's quite attractive to you because of the, the kind of current climate. Um, Josie, is there anything else that you would like to say um, on the kind of competition generally? I can't think of anything. I think you've covered everything, Amy. Thank you. Um, yeah, so if anyone has any questions, then you can get in touch with me there. Like I said, that's the um, website for the project. And then um, if you go to that learning page, that specific, specific learning page, where you can see again all this information, all the supporting resources and things like that. Um, you can sign up to the newsletter there too. And then that way you get a monthly update on what's going on. And uh, Josie, when we share this video, we have that up on the website, we can add all of the links in for your relevant pages too. So that will be, that will be helpful. Then they've got that too. Um, yes. And that's, uh, that's, I think it all really. And if there was anything else that you, you need or support or anything like that, then please do get in touch. And like I said, this might get extended until March next year because of the circumstances. So plenty of time to get involved. Please do share this round. If there's anyone or other schools or other teachers that you know, that would like to get involved, that would be wonderful. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to say the best bit. Yeah, there's a prize of £150. Um, <laughs> a £150 voucher for the winners. So those that will that be shortlisted, 10 will get shortlisted. Their entries will be on display in the meeting house, so they'll get to, get to take part in an exhibition. And then the winner will have their artwork on permanent display in the meeting house. Um, so we all always get to have it there. And we're so excited to see some of the things that people come up with. Um, and they will get a £150 voucher. And that voucher is being provided by the Wollstone Craft Society, um, which we're very grateful for. So yeah, that will be great. So that means that they will be able to, you know, we'll be able to um, provide them with a voucher so they can get some more art supplies to kind of further their creative practices. So that would be wonderful. Great. Shall we leave it there, Josie? Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, looking forward to seeing the entries.